you have the label of being the most successful person out of San Diego. Yeah. But there's a whole line of San Diego rappers that some of them may have inspired you along the way. Yeah, um, shit. Now nah, you got guys like Nick Cannon, man. Nick Cannon, you know, he put a song out. He put an album out. He had a record with R. Kelly on it. Uh, Mitchie Slick, you know what I'm saying? Uh, got Big Joan. You got fucking uh, my homie Bully 3. You know what I'm saying? The homie Hoodie Hood, man. You got some cats out there. <laughs> I remember back a long time ago, even bef um, before I even got uh, signed to Def Jam, I remember a group called the Legion of Doom uh, from San Diego. The Legion of Doom and uh, uh, Gangsta Earn. Gangsta yeah, Earn. Gangsta, yeah. Gangsta Earn. He was from the Brims. Uh, he got he got killed out there in uh, some type of uh, situation that I really don't know the you know the the story of that, but um, he had lost his life, but he was dope as fuck, you know what I'm saying? And um, I wish he was around still, you know what I'm saying? Cause I feel like it would have been cool to to see him, you know, achieve his goals, man. Cause he definitely was on the way. Now, now Gangster you know Earn, saying? he was a little bit older, right? He'd be in his 50s yeah. right now, right? Yeah, yeah, he was a little older. And then they had a guy named uh, Green Eyes when I got out of jail, this guy named Green Eyes. Um, he would have been dope too, man. He's like more of a pimp type of rapper and shit. And uh, he was from Lincoln Park. And I think somebody put some fucking PCP in his drink or some shit, and he never was the same again. You know what I mean? Like, he lost his fucking mind. But um, then you had Doc Devious from East Dago. Shit, Ziggy. I remember all those guys, man, back then. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of guys who used to rap at my school. Uh, Baby Scar, he did a song with me, uh, with me, him, and uh, my homie Baylo. We had a song called Came Around, produced by Issei Uno uh, uh, from the West Coast, from the, from the West Coast 30s and shit. And um, Master P actually bought that song from me and put it on his West Coast Bass Boys 2 uh, compilation. You know what I'm saying? And them niggas got mad, like, man, why you didn't pay us for letting Master P use that song? I'm like, look, bruh. Master P wanted a J.O. Felony song. He don't even know you niggas, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I try to get y'all niggas, get y'all known, get y'all shit known. Like, I could have gave Cuz or Sea Walk and Skip a solo record. Nigga trued up, I could have gave him anything. He didn't know you niggas, you know what I'm saying? But they was like, Cuz, I still gave them niggas some money, but they was like, acting like I owed them something, you know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, I don't owe 40 Crip, I don't owe you niggas nothing. You know what I mean? No, when you was growing up, what was the the radio like in San Diego in terms of hip hop? I mean, we had Z90, which was very supportive at the time. This was before all these big corporations took over, like whatever, whoever owns radio now. I feel like it's some Republican kind of, I don't know what the fuck, but um, the radio back in the day was more community oriented. And, um, you know, a little kid could go to the radio station on the weekend and play their record, and then if the community like your shit, you'll fuck around and then they keep playing on the radio. And somebody might pick it up or pick you up as an artist or whatever. And then all of a sudden, there's no community being able to go to the stations no more. You can't break a record. The, uh, the community can't, uh, like, it's like you can't dream of being a star because you have no way of getting your shit heard on the radio because Clear Channel and all these big ass corporations own all the stations. You know what I mean? So they fucked it up for like, you know, and they fucked up the independent game as far as us being able to have CDs and selling CDs. Like I got CDs being pressed up right now because there's so much of a fucking demand for them, right? And they try to make us think this shit ain't cracking no more. But there's so many people on my fucking social media. Man, where the fuck is the hard copies? So I had to go get hard copies made up with the barcodes, the booklet, everything back like I'm on Def Jam. And other genres of music ain't never stopped fucking making CDs. You feel me? All them rock and roll motherfuckers and all them, they still making money off of CDs. But, we're, but there are no more CD stores. Yeah, but they got CDs. You can put the shit in your fucking PlayStation and play it. You know what I'm saying? You can get it as a lot of people want them as not even to ever open them. You know what I'm saying? They just want to fucking want you to sign it and keep it as a collector's item. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that shit ain't never went nowhere. I see motherfuckers selling my CDs on the internet for a hundred bucks and I ain't getting none of this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, they got the crip hop for a hundred bucks. I'm like, what the fuck? 
Let me go and digitally remaster this shit and sell it myself. Because people are looking for it and they can't find it just to have it as the collector's item, even if they don't play it. You know what I'm saying? Thanks for watching StreetTV.net. If you're not subscribed, please hit that button below and click the bell to receive alerts and notifications. Feel free to comment below so you can give us your feedback and be sure to watch the two related episodes to the right. If you want to support this platform or follow us on social media, visit the links in the description. And thanks for watching StreetTV.net.